thought we'd take a break from the snow today and transport you to warmer days when hummingbirds take flight. These little creatures are some of the most energetic aerial athletes on the planet. And our next guest, Anne johnson Prum, is a cinematographer and producer who travels the world making documentaries. And she's here to share some incredible new insights about hummingbirds. And welcome to the show. Great to have you. Nice to be here. Interesting subject, a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. And you've actually done a documentary on hummingbirds. Why this particular subject? Well, hummingbirds are you know, one of the smallest animals on the planet. Right. And they're little known because they just flit into our lives, are there for just a millisecond, and then are gone. But I knew that there was a lot more to their story, that they had a really complicated biology and a natural history that we could get into and explore. So let's talk about some of the interesting aspects of the hummingbird. You say they're kind of feisty. Mm -hmm. They are incredibly feisty. The hummingbird. They, the they hummingbird. comes across all of us as so peaceful and this graceful, beautiful creature. I know. It's a little, you know, not too PC to say, but they, people think of them as being, you know, delicate little flowery-like creatures because they feed on nectar at flowers, but they're actually really tough. Wow. They are like, one biologist described them like a junkyard dog. Really? Because they are amped up on nectar all the time they have to defend that resource from any other hummingbird so as soon as one hummingbird comes into another hummingbird's territory they will just fight and they will hit each other with their beaks now where are they actually more commonly found well they're only found in what's known as the new world so north america south america central america you will not find them in africa or europe or any or india and where did you actually go to to study them because you went for some time right i did I started this film in Ecuador. I moved to Ecuador with my family for six months. The entire family? The entire family. Wow. <laughs> my three boys and my husband and I. And we lived in a little village in Ecuador because I knew that was sort of the epicenter of hummingbird diversity, where I could get hummingbirds in the Andes, the high Andes, mm -hmm. and in the cloud forest and in the lowlands of the Amazon. Wow. And there are different types of hummingbirds. How many different types are there? There are about 235 species, and ones that are the smallest, which is the bee hummingbird, which lives in Cuba to the biggest, which is the giant hummingbird, which isn't very giant, but for hummingbirds, it's giant. It's about the size of a, a robin, and it lives in the high Andes in okay, Chile. So, so set this up for us, and I'm trying to picture you as a cinematographer, producer, out getting video of a hummingbird. How do you actually capture all of that? It's really hard. Okay, I was gonna say, <laughs> please don't tell me it's really easy, because I'm just thinking to myself, this cannot be easy. It takes a humongous amount of patience. Uh, okay. I would go to places where I knew there would be hummingbirds feeding on flowers and then set up my camera and wait and wait and wait for hummingbirds to come. So the amount of hours spent, there's a one hour film that you'll see at the end, but there are months of waiting for the hummingbirds to come. So tell me like in a day, like how long can you sit for? Me, personally, I can sit for a really long time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tremendous amount of patience knowing that you know, something hopefully is going to happen. But a lot of times you feel like you're waiting for the bus to come, mm -hmm. you know, but maybe the bus isn't going to come. Uh, but once you've invested a certain amount of time at one flower, you feel like, well, they're going to come pretty soon. You know, I've waited this long. And usually they do. You, you would start to understand their patterns okay. and, you know, their daily sort of rhythms. They would have daily rhythms. What were some of your bigger challenges, though, actually shooting this documentary? The biggest challenge was keeping them in focus. Um, okay. We shot with a really neat new high-speed camera called a phantom camera, which you now will see used in the Olympics to you know, slow the athletes down. We can see how they're moving. Ah, and that's okay. the same sort of thing we did with the hummingbird. We could actually slow them down. What have you actually learned from that, though? I mean, like, what surprised you the most about hummingbirds? Well, one of the neat things we did, we worked with a biologist in uh, Berkeley, California, who was looking at how hummingbird males display for females. So the males of this particular species, the annas, would travel up 100 feet into the sky where they were a tiny speck and then dive down at 60 miles an hour. And during that dive, they would make a high-pitched squeak. And with the high-speed camera, we could see that they were making that high-pitched high squeak by flaring their tail feathers. And that was like a reed through a clarinet that would make this ah. noise. And before that, people thought that they were making it vocally, that they were singing that. But they were showing off as well. They were showing mm -hmm. off for the girls. So let's talk about <laughs> where people can actually catch your film, because this is amazing. You've done a couple different things, mm -hmm. but who you're working with, I mean, is really dedicated to nature. Yes, I work for, uh, this particular film was made for the Nature series on PBS, which okay. shows airs every night, every Sunday night at 8 o'clock. 
All right, good to know. And you're going to be linking up with the LEAP organization. Mm -hmm. I am curious about why you're so adamant about um, the organization and, and why it's so important to you. Well, I think LEAP uh, is an amazing organization, and it actually ties in with my hummingbird film. There's a great Mayan proverb about hummingbirds where there's a fire in the forest and all the, all the animals leave the forest except for the hummingbird who goes into the river and dips its beak in and takes one drop of water and adds it to the fire. Mm -hmm. And all the animals say, what are you doing that for? And the hummingbird says, because I can. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what the ladies who started LEAP thought. You know, we can't just look at this problem, this big fire and storm, and say we can't do anything. Everybody does what they can. That's we right. Can make a difference. It takes one person to pay it forward yeah. every single day. We got to pay yeah. it forward. And folks can catch you at somebody's house. We don't know where, but we're going to let people know coming up. But again, folks, it is next Thursday where you can catch Ann. She'll be hanging out and answering questions and mingling with folks. It happens all across the shoreline. Fun night, cocktail reception, and great food, great conversations, and dinner. All the information is right there on the screen if you missed it. Thank you so much for talking with us, Ann Johnson Prem. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Nice to be here. I'm trying to go on one of your excursions with you. <laughs> I want to go okay. backpacking with you. Are you strong? I am very strong. <laughs> I'm strong like a bull, and Don't go anywhere. I'm working at a good style coming your way right after this, everybody. Stick around. <laughs>